in this video we'll be doing a little more um, programming with our simple week one demo one code so I have a main.cs here with just one line that you've seen multiple times this line means the program is writing hi in the console window so this is the console window this is the program code source code and these are the files and folders so if I want to write to console I would say console.write if I want to read from console I would say console.read okay here's where things get tricky right so what did I do just now on line 6 so let's go back to our drawing board So let us say we have a program. This is a program. So I want to give this program. Um, this program is going to ask for a name. For a name. And then print the name. Or we can say write the name. So this program is ask whoever is running this program it's going to say what is your name and then the user will enter the name then it will store the name here inside the program and then it is going to produce an output so this is called as input this is called as output so here we have one input and one output so I have one input one output okay a program usually doesn't have just one input and one output, but this we are just starting to program, right? So any time you want to get input from the user, which it means the application is going to read the information. Anytime it pushes out, it's going to write. So this ask is the same as a read. Okay, so you have to always think from the perspective of the program. So we are going to make the program read an input. So let's call this as name. And then we are going to, instead of saying hi, we are going to say name. So a couple concepts here. One is that we are reading something. The second one is we are saving it to a variable. Okay. What is a variable? A variable is a small, tiny piece of storage in the computer's memory. Without using variables, if we just do console.readline, and then we say we want to like write what this, so for, let, let me show you, just let, let's backtrack. So I said console.readline, let's see what happens now. So it's waiting for me to enter something my name so let us say my enter my name and I press enter okay so it just read this information it cannot process the information here because it does not have it stored anywhere so if I ask the computer what was it that I entered what was the input I gave you the computer will not remember it will become like the fish dory in finding Nemo it will have temporary memory loss because that information was never saved in the memory of the computer. Anytime you want to save any, in, any piece of information, uh, if the computer wants to reuse information, it has to save it in its memory. The only way it can save it in its memory is by using a variable. A variable is not scary. It is really simple. It is just a small cup holder to hold your coffee or pen or eraser or anything like that some data okay so it is simple similar to a cup holder it's just a small piece of storage so i'm going to say in this case this is a variable of type var and the name is going to be name because 
I want the user to ask for name. I am asking the user to enter the name. Now I captured the information. I am not like Dory anymore. I remember what was entered. Now I can write it back to the console saying you entered your name is name because this variable stores modula now this variable stores this content the word called modula so let's run this and see what happens now it's waiting for my input it says your name is modula so what we have seen is a right line is a method inside the console class in this library called system. When I use it, the program can write to this black window called console. So anytime the program wants to say something, we have to make it use the console.write line. If we want to tell the computer something by giving it some information, just like how I type my name Manjula, then we would use a read line. Complication with the read line is the information has to be stored into a variable. Okay, so here is the variable. The name of the variable is name. The type of the variable is called var. Var is a generic type. If you enter a number, it will assume the form of a number. If you enter a name, it will assume the form of a name. I mean, uh, um, a word. So console.readline always returns a data type called string, which refers to a word. So this var is going to internally be primed to hold a string data type. Okay? We'll worry about data types in the next video. For now, I just want you to be very comfortable doing this. So we got a read line, we did a write line, and we used a variable. See, here you are asking for the variable, and here you are saying what's in the variable, okay? One other thing I want to point out is this equal to sign. This is called as an assignment operator. An assignment operator is the only way you can put this value, sorry, into this variable. Anything to the left of this assignment operator receives data. Anything to the right gives data. Okay? So that is something key. It is similar to like how we write algebraic expressions and all that. There's a left side and right side for any expression. Okay? And then in the middle comes the equal to sign. So it is pretty important. Okay? So I want you now to try and uh, write this piece of code or run this piece of code on my repo so you get an idea of like what, how this works. Let's do one more thing. I am um, sometimes this, okay, if I run this, see, I can't tell it's asking me for my name. So I want the computer to tell me what it wants. If the computer has to tell Anything on the console, it has to say enter your name here. It has to use the right line. Now run this. See, now it's telling me enter your name. So I know what I'm supposed to enter. It says my name is Panjula. Okay, good. So this is called as a prompt. Okay, what I did with the double slash here right now, when you put a double slash, that's called as a comment. A single line comment. A comment is a piece of 
um, information inside the program that does not get processed. It is only for the human being so that we know what's going on. It's for readability, okay? A single line comment is where the, for the only that line will be considered as a comment. Let's say like you want to like write multi-line comments, then you would put like this. whatever and then you finish it off so a single line comment has two forward slash multi-line comment is a slash star and then ends with a star slash just the reverse and then anything you enter inside will not be processed so the computer will not process this information it is for the user to understand and read okay so for example if i am I am a programmer working for a company and then I write this piece of code and there is a complicated logic. I would write a comment around that logic and explain what my thought process is. And then in a couple of years, I might quit the company and move on and another person comes in. And when he has to like look at that code, it is my way of telling that guy what I was thinking when I wrote that piece of code. So, um, a comment is just a way to add more narrative to your code. So it's more readable. Let's run this again. See, none, nothing, none of these would come. There is no compilation error. So it's all good. Okay. So all of this is mainly for the user to understand. I'll see you in the next video.